everyone. So our videos are typically a little bit more on the serious side. And so today we thought it might be fun to share some laughs with you all and to review some schizophrenia memes. So I'm a little worried about this because, you know, I've seen some really funny memes around schizophrenia. I think the important thing, though, is that they're coming from and made by people who are actually living with schizophrenia because otherwise there's this kind of fine line of are you laughing with the person or are you more laughing at them and their mental illness? And so that's perhaps something we're going to need to wade through in today's video, but hopefully there will be some funny and relatable memes to go through as well. So I should note that I haven't seen these before. Rob pulled these. Um, I don't know how I feel about this one. It's like a little triggering. Um, I don't find it super funny. It's just a little too real. So we'll skip to the next one. Remember, there are no dumb ideas. Since I feel better, I should stop taking my meds. That's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. Yeah, I think that a lot of these are going to feel a little bit too real. This is funny because I think Everyone who has any experience with schizophrenia has probably been in this position at one point or another. So I don't know. It's kind of fun to poke fun at that. Me explaining that I came off my meds again. My psychiatrist and therapist. Shadow people. <laughs> so shadow people is a common hallucination that people with schizophrenia experience. I don't really experience it, but I know that I know a lot of people who do. And so that's kind of funny that, oh, I went off my meds again and I'm explaining this to my psychiatrist and... The shadow people are also there listening, so that's kind of comical. My psychiatrist, have you tried not hearing voices or not believing your delusions? My goodness, what an idea. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> yeah, this is clearly made by a patient who has heard this from their psychiatrist, and I think it's quite funny. Um, it's maybe not even just psychiatrists who tend to say this to people, but people who are I don't know, hopefully are well-intentioned in giving you advice about how to deal with hearing voices. And it's just kind of always like, wow, what an idea. Why didn't I ever think of that in terms of just not hearing voices or not believing your delusions? And so this is relatable and I think it's quite funny. My depression telling me I'm not good enough. My schizophrenia telling me I'm the chosen one. <laughs> This can be quite conflicting, actually, in yourself when you are experiencing depression and thoughts that you're not good enough, but then also experiencing delusions of grandeur and that, you know, you're the chosen one or whatever. So that's that's funny and I relate. Dating, getting married, having kids, working full-time, getting degrees, exercising, socializing, <sighs> healthy people. Took a shower today, <laughs> me. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so real. And I, I feel kind of validated that this is like a meme that people have been sharing and relating to because it really does feel like it's just kind of insurmountable getting all these tasks done. And sometimes it really is just about being proud of the fact that you did one little thing, whether that's took a shower, whether that's just got out of bed, you know, brush your teeth, whatever it is. Sometimes that is a win. When people gain 20 pounds on Abilify, me gaining over 100 pounds over four, or, oh, okay. When people gain 20 pounds on Abilify, me gaining over 100 pounds over a few months on Risperidone and Haloperidol. This is fine. Weight gain sucks with antipsychotics, you know, like even the 20 pounds. I, if that's you, that sucks too. But yeah, gaining over 100 pounds in a few months on certain meds is not fun. I gained, I think, 60 pounds in the span of a few months on one of the meds that I was on. And it was rough. And I, I feel like I relate to the dog sitting with the fire all around him saying, this is fine. You know, like, I have to take these meds. This is fine. It's not fine. <laughs> I'm the son of God. Of course you are, Jesus, 12 AD. I'm the son of God. Of course you are, Jerry, 2012 AD. <laughs> So, you know, I think that this is kind of one of the ones where it's more making fun of people who have the illness. And I, I don't know. I just, I feel like it's not, it doesn't have a lot of empathy for the person who's experiencing this. Like, yeah, I guess this could be funny that, oh, you know, the same thing is taken very differently at different times. And that could be like a comical interaction in the psych ward, but I don't really think it's that funny because I, again, I do feel it's more making fun of the person who's experiencing the delusion. I'm going to, I'll do it. Okay, so you're going to do it to our Yeah. Okay. Before antipsychotics, after antipsychotics. 
okay, like I, I kind of get it. But again, I feel like this is another one that was not made by people who are actually living with schizophrenia and on antipsychotics because I don't think that you really feel like perfectly presentable and whatnot while on antipsychotics. Like they're kind of rough and they come with a lot of side effects and you you don't feel like this like picture perfect representation of yourself. And so, okay, maybe it's hard to keep up with hygiene and whatnot when you're not on antipsychotics, but it's also hard when you are on antipsychotics for kind of different reasons. So I don't know, this one I don't find super funny either. Okay, time to sleep. Hmm. That time you had a psychotic break in front of your GS family and friends on New Year's Day. Ah, a classic. <laughs> what an idiot. Oh, this is too real. And this, yeah, this is funny and very real. I think that I have a lot of like shame and embarrassment around some of the things that I've done while psychotic. And, you know, it's something that my brain loves to do is replay those memories and relive that kind of trauma that you experienced. And so, yes, I relate to this. 3.26 a.m. Okay, that's a blessed number. I'm safe. 3.27 a.m. Curse number. They want to kill me, please. Help. 3.20 a.m. Okay, that's... <laughs> I didn't really know that this was like a thing, but I have a really hard time with uneven numbers in the time as well. So I don't know, this makes me feel a little seen and validated, but I think it's funny. <laughs> Having noticed that the mean voice in your head that insults you is awful confident for something that's literally never done anything in its life except be mean to you. Like, one of us is pathetic and it's not me, buddy. Get a hobby. Yikes. Self-care is resting the mean voice in your head. <laughs> I like this. This is kind of a nice reframe when you're dealing with you know, not nice voices. And I think that this is quite funny. And it's maybe I have actually even a good strategy for kind of fighting back when you're struggling with negative voices. Me and my homies on the Sarah Quill. Oh, it's like sad funny because I've been on Sarah Quill and this is pretty much how I felt too. And so this is clearly created by someone who is living with schizophrenia and has been on Sarah Quill. Um, and didn't have a great experience with it. So if you're on Circle and you don't feel like this, awesome. I hope that that's the case. But if you have had this experience with Circle or any other antipsychotic that causes this too, I'm with you. And these guys are too. <laughs> are you seeing someone? Do you mean a therapist, a boy, or hallucinations? <laughs> Important to clarify, it could be any of those. Um, I think that's funny because... Yeah, it could be any of those, and I relate to this as well. Wow, how did you get like that? Every time someone mixes up psychotic and psychopathic, I do one push-up. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, I like this one. This is very true that people often mix up, you know, psychotic and psychopathy. We actually have a video on it, which you can check out the difference between the two. But that's a common misconception that people have and so it's funny that he just does one push-up and he's ripped because that's how often it happens man this escape room sucks sir this is a psych ward <laughs> this is another sad funny one because i feel like i've i've been in that position where it's like oh this escape room sucks um and it's actually a psych ward and i think this is funny in kind of a dark humor way <laughs> Okay, so I just kind of got a glimpse of this one and it's quite funny, but akathisia, actual torture. Corporate needs you to find the differences, differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. So this is one of my favorite memes from The Office. Um, and I think that this is quite funny because akathisia is when it's kind of something that you get from antipsychotic medication. It's a side effect where you feel really like jittery and kind of like you're going to jump out of your skin. We have a video on it where I go into more detail about what it is, but it does sometimes feel like actual torture. And so this is kind of a funny meme and I relate to it as well. When I'm watching a video without audio added to it, my brain, fine, I'll do it myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I mean, I've been kind of laughing. Well, not laughing, it sucks. But over the past few days, I have been listening to a voice singing Taylor Swift's new album, Midnights, kind of on repeat. And it's kind of an example of when there is no sound, you know, playing to my life, but my brain is filling it in. So I relate to this one and it's kind of funny. 
happiness, schizophrenia. Oh. Oh, if you relate to this meme, I'm really sorry. You know, I I think I I understand that it feels sometimes like schizophrenia can rob you of leading a full life and happiness and that sort of thing, but it doesn't have to. You know, it is possible to still find joy and happiness and meaning in your life, even if you are living with schizophrenia. So I hope I can provide at least a little bit of a cur- encouragement that it is possible to be happy while living with schizophrenia. Okay, <laughs> I, I love this meme. So a coincidence, a message from God, corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture, psychotic me. They're the same picture. (laughs) I just really like this meme, and I think that this is a really funny one again, that, yeah, it's very hard to decipher the difference between just a coincidence and a secret meaning message or a message that's just for you or a message from God. Schizophrenia. It's not paranoia if the cappuccino really is out to get you. Oh, goodness. (laughs) Um, This is kind of another one that kind of feels kind of like it's making fun of people with the illness. I don't know. It's such a fine line with memes about this kind of stuff, but I don't know, that is a menacing looking cappuccino, so, (laughs) haha. I smoke a joint for fun. I feel euphoria. I end up in the ER because I think I'm God. I end up in the ER because I think I'm God. (laughs) Oh, I love this movie, that's funny. Um, Yeah, I relate to this. I did a video on my experience with marijuana Um, where I talk a little bit more about how it can go wrong. Um, And especially if you're living with a psychotic disorder like schizophrenia. And so this is kind of, again, another sad, funny, like, oh, yeah, been there. That sucks. (laughs) The scariest things on earth, the dark, clowns, sharks, serial killers, death, that baby that keeps looking at me like he knows that I can read minds. (laughs) Aw. I don't know if I get scared of that, but I can relate to feeling like people around me know what I'm thinking or know that I, I don't know, like I feel like I can read their minds or I feel like they can read my mind. I don't know. It's a, it's a difficult experience. I don't know if it's the scariest thing on earth, but I get what they're trying to get at. So, haha. Your delusions after hearing someone else's delusions. Write that down. Write that down. <laughs> Um, I think this was like a fear for me in terms of dating someone who also experiences delusions was that, you know, they would just feed off each other. And, you know, sometimes talking with people, other people who maybe are in a delusional state or who are expressing a delusion they have had, sometimes, yeah, I do fall into that thinking where I'm like, oh, that sounds, that sounds real or that sounds right. That sounds something like something I believe, you know, and so it, it, that can be a, a difficult trap to fall into. Me studying the news for hours to find the secret messages written in it. Me doing anything else. <laughs> oh, this is another like sad to real one. Um, there was a period in my life where I was obsessive about getting my medical files, like a thick stack of medical files from my doctor's office and would just kind of pour over them and highlight and dissect everything and come up with, um, you know, connections and, and just kind of get lost in like um, finding secret messages and whatever, all that kind of stuff that I was doing. But then it feels like when I tried to do anything else, I was like incapable. And so I, I feel this very deeply where, you know, when you are in a psychotic state, it's very easy to hyperfixate and really give everything you have to like one delusional kind of task or delusional effort, but it's really hard to accomplish anything else. So this is funny. For Christmas, I want a dragon. Be realistic. I want to not have schizophrenia anymore. What color do you want your dragon? Oh, <laughs> <Aww. laughs> yeah. That's funny and sad. (laughs) Me trying to tell my therapist the truth without getting put in a psychiatric hospital. (laughs) Oh, I feel this one deeply as well. It seems like it is such a like fine line dance. And I have played that game one too, like far too many times 
where you want to be honest and you want to give a true depiction of how you're doing and where you're at and what your thoughts are and whatnot to your therapist or psychiatrist or whatever. But there's the very real fear of getting formed and getting sent to the hospital, which is a place that I don't know of a lot of people wanting to go to. And so, yeah, it kind of feels like you are crawling through this field of lasers trying to um, let them know how you're doing, but not so much that you get sent to the hospital. Now that said, I have learned over the years that it really is better to just be honest. And if you really don't feel like the hospital is the best place for you, be honest about that too. And hopefully your health provider will take that into account and try to find you know, a way to work on problems that you may be experiencing in a way that feels good for both of you. Schizophrenia and negative symptoms, antipsychotics, making me tired. Yeah, that feels real. Um, the schizophrenia negative symptoms combined with like the lethargy and kind of fuzziness that comes along with antipsychotics makes for a really difficult duo. And I get that, the making me tired, making me feel kind of shitty. Elon Musk developing a brain chip to stream music in your head. Schizophrenics. Look what they need to mimic a fraction of our power. <laughs> I like that this is kind of an empowering one and reframing schizophrenia symptoms to be like a superpower or a, some kind of power. That's kind of cool. I like it. Schizophrenia has positive symptoms. Ah, positive doesn't mean good. <clears throat> that is kind of a not fair and disappointing aspect of schizophrenia. When you hear that there's positive symptoms, it's like, oh, cool, there's some positives to schizophrenia, but no, positive doesn't actually mean good. And we have a video where I talk more about the difference between negative and positive symptoms and what they actually are, which you can check out too. So that is all of the schizophrenia memes that Rob found for me to look through. Um, I hope that, you know, it was able to provide some levity and humor for you guys as well. Um, I think that that's actually kind of a really important thing in terms of coping with a serious mental illness like schizophrenia. It can be kind of heavy sometimes dealing with and managing schizophrenia. And so I think bringing in a little bit of humor and, you know, levity can really help with coping. You know, like I mentioned, I think there is a fine line between empathic humor about the experience of living with schizophrenia and people who maybe don't have schizophrenia making memes that are kind of making fun of people who are living with schizophrenia and kind of making them out to be crazy. And so I think that that approach to humor around schizophrenia is not okay. But if it's coming from a place of trying to make light, maybe not make light of your situation, but find the humor in your situation and be able to laugh about it and laugh about your experiences and maybe even form a connection with someone else who's experiencing similar things in terms of connecting around the humor of the experience can be really beneficial. A lot of times some of these memes are popping up on our Discord community and it's a really, really nice way for people to feel seen and feel val validated. You know, like I said, with some of these memes, it makes me feel like, oh, I'm not the only one who experiences this. And oh, it maybe it can be kind of funny and I can reframe my experience of this to be a little bit more lighthearted. And I think that that goes a really long way in terms of coping and managing the illness. So thanks so much for watching this video. If you wanna see more from us, make sure to subscribe. And also if you wanna help support us in creating videos like this, make sure to check out the link to our Patreon page in the description below. I also mentioned our online peer support community, which you also gain access to by becoming a patron. We offer online peer support groups as well as different text channels where you can access a multitude of different kinds of peer support. So if that is something that interests you or if you just want to help support us in creating this content, please make sure to check out our Patreon page. Thank you so much again. And as always, wishing you and your loved ones good health. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.